Hey, welcome! Tech for Road Channel here. I'm Michael, and um, that's one of the most interesting Android Wear based smartwatches of 2018, the TicWatch Pro. Uh, I'd say a brilliant idea which suffers from both the weak Qualcomm hardware as well as all the issues that are surrounding Android Wear. Uh, but now we have Wear OS 2.0 running on this, I would say, brilliant for its price tag smartwatch. Let's go and check it out! Among the most discussed watches, mostly because of its price and specs, and it just got Android Wear 2.0. I'll review the watch for you. And by the end of this video, comparison with the Garmin Phoenix 5X and a Macefit Stratos, let's get started! Is it the smartwatch flagship killer? Or just another device surrounded by noise and good marketing? We have seen this year so many interesting smartwatches that it is hard to see any surprises. And I'm still fascinated by two models in particular, the Amazfit 2, or also known as Stratus, and the Matrix Power Watch. There are, of course, decent new additions from Huawei and Samsung, but since I'm more focused on budget-oriented solutions, the TicWatch Pro is the one I've put my faith at. You might be aware that, at the time making this review, we have two main groups of wear devices, smart bracelets and smart watches. And the smart watches could be of a few types, sport oriented, which usually stay away from Wear OS, and the smarter ones based on the Google operating system, which could be both a strength and a weakness, and just got its major update to version 2. The story with TicWatch didn't start too well, as I had issues completing my registration on their website, and for some reason I was not getting any status updates via email, but luckily, the delivery happened quite fast. The box we have is good, sort of premium feel. I've just said sort of, because we've seen better. The watch itself, papers and the charging module is what you will find in there. I've seen rather polarized comments about the design. Some people dislike the surrounding numbers, some people dislike the rim, others criticize the buttons and the size. I'm one of these that somewhat like this design as it is. There are silver and black options, and if we have to be absolutely honest, it looks more like the older digital watches. One has to really stare into the screen to figure out it is a nice smartwatch. On the other side, it feels solid, and surprisingly, I believe the real-life look is a bit better than the impression that you get via the photos. The strap is a little weird. A hybrid looks like leather on the outside and feels like silicon on the inside. It is certainly okay to be worn and the material is gentle to the skin. Now, what is very interesting about the TicWatch Pro is the display, or the two of them. Another hybrid component AMOLED and FSTN. The AMOLED is the more beautiful one and actually has some quite good qualities. With 400 by 400 pixel resolution, it shows wonderful and natural colors and to my surprise, mostly thanks to the glass layer, has good visibility in daylight conditions. I was able to read notification even with sunglasses on in direct sunlight, meaning that the brightness is very good. The secondary display is FSTN, it looks like an old non-smart digital watch. While the device is in smart mode, this kind of display is the default one only if the watch is inactive and if you don't touch the defaults. There is the option to use the AMOLED always on, which will drastically decrease the battery life. And the essential modes consumption is close to zero. On the side, there are the clicky buttons, the upper one opens the menus, and the lower one can be configured and its default selection is to go into sports mode. 
Long press of the top one opens Google Assistant, which now with Wear OS is activated via a swipe right action as well. As for the hardware, the TicWatch Pro doesn't shine that much. Not that there are too many choices anyways. It uses Snapdragon Wear 2100, almost two-year-old CPU, known for its performance and battery consumption complications. And compared to the previous TicWatch models, which use a MediaTek chipset, this is certainly a step up. But just notice the time between the start of the phone ringing and the reaction of the watch. 512 megabytes RAM, 4 gigabytes ROM, GPS, bunch of sensors, these are the most significant moments for the hardware specs. Now, something very important for those of you that like sports, IP68 waterproof rating doesn't mean you can swim. I've read a lot of articles about that and decided to verify with TicWatch support themselves. And I have a written confirmation that they do not recommend swimming because the microphone and the speaker in particular could leak water and that could be rather fatal. Before sharing more day life experience, let's have a word about the software. It arrives with Android Wear and at the time I received it, it was based on 1.5 and just a couple of days ago I got the version 2.0. If you hope to hear that the watch has become quicker, no, it hasn't. It is as laggy as it used to be, quite snappy after a reboot and pretty laggy after just a day of usage. There are a few significant changes which are positive. Notifications are now a single scrolling pane as opposed to the paginated form before. There is a clear old button and a few nice actions for Gmail. Google Assistant is now easier to access and it can be quite powerful too. Yes, the TicWatch Pro has an inbuilt microphone and speaker and besides utilizing Google Assistant, you can also make some calls. Slight revamp of the quick settings is notable, as well as an update of Google Fit. I like much better the Wear OS 2.0 way of configuring watch faces. You have to long press on the main one and you can switch to your preferred ones, which makes better sense than the previous idea implemented by Google, changing via swipe. The thing is that although Wear OS has the whole Play Store behind itself, I find the default watch faces on the much more basic Amazfit Stratus better and nicer than most of the watch faces you'd find in Play Store. Some of them are free, some of them are partially free, and all this uncertainty whether you have to again pay for a basic watch face makes me dislike this approach knowing that I can download hundreds for free for the Amazfit Stratus. Speaking of it, it doesn't run Wear OS and is much more simple, it is sport-oriented and snappier. The average battery life in smart mode on the TIC watch was tops two days and the Amazfit easily lasts through the week. Both can stream music to Bluetooth devices, both can read from the internal storage, the TIC watch can use any app from Play Store, has higher resolution screen, keyboard option and all the nice features that Wear OS can provide, including showing calendar events on the screen, using Google Maps and so on. But it is miserable when it comes to sports. Even Strava shows ridiculously few infos compared to the sports mode on the Amazfit, which by the way does everything else right, except taking proper part of Google's ecosystem. No mic, no speaker, no calls from the watch, but much better for physically active users with longer lasting battery life and awesome for sports activities, especially at that price. If we put the TicWatch Pro side by side with the twice more expensive Garmin Phoenix 5X, the situation is similar. Well, the Phoenix build quality is in its own league and it is the closest thing to being unbreakable. And for sports, not just better, the detailed info that it shows on its transflective display puts any Wear OS device to shame. To my surprise, Wear OS struggles to show basic information like elevation gain and current altitude, 
And if you want to get this kind of info, you have to dig into some details of Strava or another specialized app. In the Phoenix 5X, and even in the Stratos by Amazfit, this information is there, out of the box, on your display. Mentioning apps? Here is the one called Mobvoi, and they are the manufacturer of TickWatch, and it is, well, you see it, not too useful. At least, it doesn't crash, which is a good start. Looks like, at the moment, the world of smartwatches is a bit confusing, and there only are a few brands which know where they want to be and are going their own path. The TicWatch Pro is an attempt to add a bit of excitement in the Wear OS market, which some major players are not keen on supporting, with Samsung being among the latest examples. To sum it up, rather unimpressive hardware, mostly thanks to the choice of a chipset, with an operating system that struggles to prove itself as a meaningful running environment for wearable devices, and a bunch of cool features led by the always-on FSTN display giving you at least 30 days battery life. The TicWatch Pro could have been awesome if it wasn't for the hardware and the software. A friend of mine likes to say, put the bat aside and there will be nothing left. Well, luckily, the TicWatch Pro has a few strong cards in its sleeve, but can it be the competition? I don't know yet, but we can talk about this in the comments below the video. It's been a great pleasure to make this review for you, mostly based on the many requests I recently got. Keep it up with the feedback, I'll make sure to carefully follow, just like I hope you will do by subscribing, liking and sharing this video. Do a lot of good things and I'll see you around!